Hi, my name is Josh Mast. I'm back again on the producer of Toy Soldiers War Chest, and today we're going to take our first look at gameplay. So Toy Soldiers War Chest at its heart is a strategy game, a tower defense game, and we're playing as Kaiser, defending our toy box from the attacking Starbright Army. The job of the Starbright Army is to march across this bridge and attack our base, so our job is to defend that, and we're going to build some turrets as defenses to fend them off. Just like in the previous Toy Soldiers games and other tower defense games you may have played, the core of the strategy is by placing and upgrading these turrets to fight off the attackers. Now in Toy Soldiers, the AI can control the turrets for you and you can play the game more strategically, but where the game gets really fun is being able to take direct control of the turrets and jump right into the action. By taking direct control of the turrets and shooting at the enemies ourselves, we're doing a lot of fun things, so it's, it's of course more fun to play that way, we think. And you're also earning extra money that you can use to upgrade faster, and you're earning action points that we'll see a little bit later when you can call in more powerful units by spending your action points to deploy your hero, your vehicle, and some of the more powerful attacks like barrages. You can see here as the, the fight's going on that the, the environment is reacting, we're destroying and sort of knocking down bits and pieces of toy. Plastic and springs are falling down, raining from the sky. Now for this next attack, it's a little bit stronger infantry. We've got the buddy bears. These are the stuffed bears who are leading the attack. So we're going to call in our hero, Kaiser. Kaiser will look familiar for any of you who have played the first Toy Soldiers game. We're bringing him back, and he's got a more powerful army with him this time, and he's got a lot of upgrades. So this time around, players will be able to collect, customize, and upgrade the weapons and, and loadout that they'll bring with them into battle. Each of the heroes have their own primary, secondary weapons and, of course, grenades that they can use. And they've also got perks and talents along with barrages that players can customize and, and choose which loadout they're going to take into each map. Now, the heroes are pretty strong, but Kaiser didn't last against that one. He got taken down by the Buddy Bears, so we're going to build something a little bit more powerful this time and build an artillery turret. Now we saw the environment being knocked down earlier. We took it a little bit further with Toy Soldiers War Chests and we made the environment uh, able to be destroyed so that it changes the way the map plays. So what we're going to show and take a look at here is being able to use this artillery turret to destroy this bridge so the enemies can no longer walk straight into our base. So by knocking out that bridge, the enemy units are now going to have to find a different way into the base and they're going to have to path around here and take this side path and attack us from a different part. So this is cool because now players can change the way the map plays and they can decide if they want to create choke points in different places and how they want to try to create barriers and entry points for enemy units to get into and attack their base. So now that we've got enemies coming in a different way, we need to set up some more defenses. We'll build another turret over here. And you can see uh, for the first time we've got some armored units coming down behind these, these pixies, these armored unicorns. Now the anti-infantry turret that we've been using is really effective against the light infantry, but it doesn't do much damage against armored units. You can see we've got these armored unicorns and we've got these heavy armored units, these rolly cats, which are giant toy piggy banks. In order to fight these guys and do enough damage, we're going to need something a little more powerful and a little bit more suited for the job. So we're going to build some anti-armor units. And for Kaiser, he's got these mortars that'll do great at destroying the armored units. We saw earlier with the artillery the ability to take direct control of the bullets after they're fired. It's something we called shell cam. And you can do that with all the turrets in the game. So all of these turrets that are firing projectiles, by holding down the trigger you can actually guide and adjust them as they're fired and speed up and slow down to get a little bit more precision and uh, aim a little bit more closely to the enemies. Now the mortars will do a good job against dealing with these, but we're going to use our action points that we've gained to call in something a little more powerful, which is Kaiser's tank. All the heroes have their own vehicles that players can take control of, and they all work and play very differently. So in Kaiser's case, he's very good at the heavy armor. He's got a tank that you players can take control of, and he does a very good job at dealing with the enemy armor. As we take a look at some of the other heroes and the other armies later on, you'll see that they all play very differently. Some heroes have flying vehicles, and they've all got their own different play styles that come with them.
Now, Kaiser's tank did a good job at dealing with the armored units, but if we look at our wave list, we can see we've got aero units coming next. So we're going to need to build some anti-air defense to deal with it. And Kaiser's got a flak cannon that'll work really well. So we'll place a few flak cannons around the map, and we'll do some upgrades to get ready for it. We've got a flock of Pegasus attacking us, and they're supported by some fairies that are going to fly around and heal the units as they pass them on the battlefield. Now, just like the mortar, we've got that shell cam to let players take control of and guide the missile once it's been fired. And like the rest of the turrets, players can also choose to play more strategically. If you're not great or you don't have a lot of fun shooting the flak cannon, you can choose to stay in the tank or in a different turret and deal with some of the other enemies and let the AI take control of your anti-air turrets. We can see the next wave is being attacked. We've got an all-out assault from Starb right now. She's sending a little bit of everything at us. We've got armored units. We've got infantry. We've got some more aerial units. Fortunately, we've done a pretty good job of building up and defending our base and doing some good upgrades to our turrets along the way. But we can see now, because we've knocked out that bridge, these units are choosing to take a different path into our base, and they're going to march across this paintbrush laying over the river. So we're going to have to build some defenses on this side of the map. We spent some time working on the AI and making the units more intelligent in general. So now the enemies are deciding how and where they're going to attack you, and when they're going to stop and try to destroy your defenses, or when they're going to march in and attack your toy box. This changes things up from the typical tower defense you may be used to, where units march in the same line into your base, and they don't really stop to engage you. So in Toy Soldier's War Chest, there's a lot more action to get used to. You've got to have defenses all around your base and a well-rounded and well-upgraded defense to fend off the attackers. We've got our turret here, and they're doing a, a good job of trying to defend it, but it's not going to be enough. Fortunately, we've got enough action points by taking control of the turret that we can call in our most powerful attack, which is Kaiser's Barrage. Today, we're looking at his Zeppelin Barrage. You can see the players can control where and how it's going to enter the battlefield, and then you'll see the Zeppelin come in here and destroy this wave of attackers. All the heroes have several different barrages that players will upgrade as the, and collect as they play through the game. And players can customize and choose which ones they want to take into each map. Here we've got Starbright's final all-out assault. This is her boss unit, the Cloud Castle. This Cloud Castle is going to fly all the way across the battlefield and try to destroy our toy box. And on its way, it's going to unleash these smaller, cloud, uh, smaller rainbow castles that are dropping these glitter nukes across the battlefield, adding a little color and destroying most of our defenses in the process. And that's our first look at gameplay for Toy Soldiers War Chest, coming in early 2015 on the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Till next time.